One of the most enduring mathematical innovations is the Pythagorean theorem. First appearing over 2,500 years ago, this elegant statement reveals a profound truth about right angled triangles. Attributed to the ancient Greek philosopher Pythagoras, the theorem states, the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Here's what that means. A right angled triangle has one 90 degree angle. The side across from this right angle is called the hypotenuse. In this triangle, the letter C represents the hypotenuse and the other two sides are represented by A and B. The Pythagorean theorem states that the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares on the other two sides. In other words, the length of C squared equals A squared plus B squared. A, B, and C are variables representing all possible lengths of the sides of any right angle triangle. According to the theorem, if the sides A and B of a right angle triangle are 5 cm and 12 cm, the hypotenuse C can be determined by this formula. C squared equals 5 squared plus 12 squared. Solving, we can see that C squared equals 169. The square root of 169 is 13. C equals 13 cm. The knowledge that the sides of the right angle triangles have this relationship predates Pythagoras. But he and his followers, the Pythagoreans, proved the theorem to be true. Before I demonstrate Pythagoras's ingenious proof, perhaps you would like to try to prove that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Here are a couple of clues. Pythagoras started by arranging four identical right angle triangles to create this configuration. The sides of the triangles are labeled A, B, and C. He then rearranged the triangles to create this configuration. The solution requires making a statement about the area of the squares involved in both configurations, a statement that confirms C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Pause the video if you're interested in attempting this proof yourself. If not, let's move on to Pythagoras. Here is his proof. The logic is elegant. Pythagoras started with a single right angle triangle. The length of its sides are represented by the variables A, B, and C. C is the hypotenuse. Next, he arranged four exact copies of this triangle to produce this. This assembly creates two squares. The gray smaller one sitting diagonally with sides length C and the larger outer square it's outlined with yellow lines. The area of the gray square is c times c, c squared. It is not necessary to define the area of the larger square, just note that it is fixed, can't be changed. Important to the proof is the fact that the area of the large square, not covered by triangles, is equal to c squared, the area of the gray square. Pythagoras then rearranged the four triangles inside the large square to create this. Now the two new gray squares created by this rearrangement represent the area of the large square not covered by the triangles. The area of one of the new squares is a times a, that's a squared, and the area of the other new square is b times b, that's b squared. You can probably see where this is going. The gray area in the first construction, c squared, must be equal to the total gray area in the second construction. This area is a squared plus b squared. In a mathematical statement, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. This is Pythagoras's proof of the theorem. Elegantly simple and a remarkable demonstration of the power of the human mind. Since its inception, the Pythagorean theorem has played a role in architecture, still used today. Here's an example. Suppose you wanted to place some markers to lay out the corners of the foundation of a rectangular building, like this one, 
a rustic shelter for making maple syrup. The building is designed to be 4 meters long and 3 meters wide. We can start by placing two markers to define the 4 meter back wall. The problem now is to position one of the 3 meter side walls so that it is at right angles, that is 90 degrees, to the long wall. A carpenter's square is difficult to use over long distances like this, but thanks to Pythagoras there is another method. Here's the right angle triangle we're trying to create. We know the length of two sides. If we can determine the hypotenuse, we can use tape measures to lay out the triangle. According to Pythagoras, for this to be a right angle triangle, c squared must equal 3 squared plus 4 squared. So c squared equals 9 plus 16, and c equals the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 5, so c equals 5 meters. Placing this third marker is just a matter of using measuring tapes to confirm that the location creates a triangle with sides 3, 4, and 5 meters. With one right angled corner, the other corners can now be established with a tape measure. The 3, 4, 5 ratio is well known to builders, and of course any units can be used. In the 2500 years since Pythagoras first presented his proof of this theorem, over a hundred new and different proofs have appeared. But his original ancient proof stands out for its simple elegance. Again, a demonstration of the power of the human mind. You will find more science and technology related videos at our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the videos link.